wouldn't work. Amen. See, because I know me well enough to know me. But you know what? God knows me even more than I know myself. And I can hide a lot of stuff from myself. There's nothing hidden from God. Amen. And because of that, I'm able to come to Him with no prerequisites, no requirements, that He understands the wretch that I am. And He understands that if I submit to Him and I crucify this flesh and allow Him to live through me and in me, then truly it is no longer I, but it is Jesus Christ. Amen. Amen. Turn with me to Ephesians chapter 2. It should be like right there. If you were in Galatians, well, no, you went to 2.20. So. Ephesians chapter 2, let's look at verses 12 through 18. Ephesians chapter 2, verses 12 through 18. That at that time you were without Christ, being aliens from the commonwealth of Israel and strangers from the covenants of promise, having how much hope? No. Having no hope without God in the world. Verse 13. But now, in Christ Jesus, you who once were afar off have been brought near by what? By the blood of Christ. Verse 14. For Christ himself is our peace, who has made both one and has broken down the middle wall of separation, having abolished in his flesh the enmity, that is, the law of commandments contained in ordinances, so as to create in himself, what? One new man. To create in himself one new man from the two, thus doing what? Making peace. And that he might reconcile them both to God in one body through the Christ or through the cross, thereby putting to death the enmity. And he came and he preached peace to you who were far off and to those who were near. For through him we both have access by one spirit to the Father. Back in Jesus' day and in that time. Was it lawful for a Gentile to go into the house, or was it lawful for a Jew to go into the house of a Gentile? Was it lawful for a Jew to eat with a Gentile? What kind of relationships did the Jews have with the Gentiles? Strained. Strained. Would you say there was a wall that was between them? But wasn't the Jews raised up to bring light to the Gentiles? Weren't they supposed to be God's missionaries to bring salvation to the Gentiles? Mm -hmm. Did they do it? No. They built this wall and they had enmity. And Jesus Christ tore down that wall and he put away that enmity. And he made one out of the two. This is why in Christ there is no longer Jew nor Gentile. But there is one. There is Jesus Christ, and through Him we have peace and access to God the Father. Is that good news? Amen. Why doesn't it stir our hearts the way it stirred their hearts? Right? All, all these people in all these denominations want to stand on their point of light rather than come into the Father of light, <clears throat> where we can all be one. Very well said. Very well said. Uh, you want to look at some more scriptures, or are you ready to end? We're going to hurry. Okay, thank you. Because this is the good part here. This next part. Turn to Philippians chapter 2. I may have to take this up the next time I preach. One book over, Philippians chapter 2. Let's look at verses 1 through 11. What does the word consolation mean? Second place. Consolation, second place? 
Well, look at the text. And look at look at the context. What does that word consolation mean? Encouragement. I like that. Yes. Encouragement. Hope. Therefore, if there is any consolation in Christ, if any comfort of love, if any fellowship of the Spirit, if any affection and mercy, fulfill my joy by being what? Like-minded. Like having the same love, being of how many accords? And how many minds? Now, there's 60 people here. How do you get 60 people to be of one accord in one month? Right? You were talking about the throne room, the heart, right? And every yes. individual, there's two places. There's a throne and there's a cross. I choose where I go. If I'm on the cross and every one of us here on the cross, then Jesus Then you're not on the throne. That's right. right. Then Jesus reigns. And guess what? Then we can be one. Amen. Listen, what will make us like-minded? It's by having that personal relationship with Jesus Christ and knowing Him. Because it's not a different Christ for each of us. Jesus is the same Amen. yesterday, today, forever. Amen. So it's going to be the same Christ for you and the same Christ for me. The same Jesus. If He's in me and He's in you, then we can be of one mind. If we are crucified with Christ, then we can be of one heart. And if Christ is living in me, then I can love you even when you really, really get me upset. Amen. Right? Amen. And I can accept you even when we don't see eye to eye. Now, when Christ lives in you, does He wave a magic wand over you? That means that you'll never get upset again. You'll never have an argument with your family, your loved ones. You'll never have an argument with your co-workers. What that means is that Christ gives you the power to accept and show grace and to not act from fallen selfish motives. Right? To respond rather than react. Oh, I love that. I love that. <coughs> Verse 3, let nothing be done through <coughs> here. This is a very important word. If you remember one verse... Remember this verse. You want to know how you deal with your brothers and sisters in church? You want to know how you deal with your family members in the family? You want to know how you deal with the world out there? Verse 3. Let nothing be done through what? Selfish ambition or selfish conceit. But in lowliness of mind, let each esteem what? Others better than himself. Verse 4. Let each of you look out not only for his own interest, but also for the interest of who? Let this mind be in you, which was also in Christ Jesus, who being in the form of God, did not consider it robbery to be equal with God, but made himself of no reputation, taking the form of a bondservant, and coming in the likeness of men. And being found in appearance as a man, he humbled himself and became obedient to what? To the point of death, even the death of the cross. Therefore God has also highly exalted him, and given him the name which is above every name, that at the name of Jesus Christ, every knee shall bow of those in heaven, and those on earth, and those under the earth, and that every tongue should confess that Jesus Christ is Lord to the glory of God the Father. Amen. Brothers and sisters, the power of the cross is the power to change your life, the power to make you and change you from a selfish individual who only cares about himself to a Christ-like individual who will put the other's needs ahead of your own. The power of the cross is the power to give you a new heart, to make you a new creation. The old has passed, the new have come. Listen. Can you experience heaven here on earth? Yes. yes. The only way to do that is to be crucified with Christ. Amen. Because selfishness and sin cannot be in the very presence of God. And so I'll leave you with this thought. I want you
want you to think about this all week. Why has Jesus not come? How would Jesus ever leave the heavenly sanctuary ministering for sin unless sin eventually finally stops going up there? How can you and I stand in the presence of a holy, righteous God without a mediator in heaven mediating our sins unless we finally overcome sin? Amen. Do you want Jesus to come back? Amen. Spirit of Prophecy has told us over and over again that there needs to be a work that has to start with God's people. And that is a work of the putting away of sin. Amen. Do you believe that you can do it? Yes. yes. Do you believe that Christ, I guess here's a better way to say it, do you believe that Christ can do that in you? Amen. Can, will Christ ever promise you something that he does not have the power to fulfill? No. I heard that from somebody when you were eating lunch. Okay? And I've thought about that every day that I've heard that. So, with all that said, why hasn't he come back yet? You go home, look in the mirror, and ask yourself that question. Because that's the answer. Look in the mirror. Fine. Closing hymn this morning is hymn number 462. <laughs>
experience that God is trying to show me. And I'm having trouble understanding that kind of love, but God can do it. And God is doing it. This is what I want for all of us. Mm -hmm. Submit to that love. Let us bow our heads as we close. Raise, can you come up here and close your prayer for us, please? Dear Heavenly Father, I am so humbled to be able to be in a wonderful church as such as this. And, and I know that we have a long way to go, Lord, but I'm, I'm just so encouraged to hear such a message, such an end time message. From this pulpit, Lord, it's just wonderful that in my own home church, I know that the work that you really are interested in is, maybe it's not finished at the moment, but it's being talked about Amen. here. Amen. And people's hearts are burning for you. Amen. This is what we really want. We Amen. want you to sit upon the throne of our hearts so that yes. we can have power that is beyond ourselves. Yes. So that we can love our brothers and sisters that we're not even capable of. Amen. We can reach out to brothers and sisters that maybe that, that we have conflicts with that, that maybe we don't even like, but we can love them in new ways and see things, and you can change us mm -hmm. so that these kind of people may even become our best of friends. Amen. Lord, we want to come home. Amen. We want to make a place here in our hearts so rich, a soil so fertile that you can grow such a wonderful church that you can't be in the sanctuary any longer. That yes. you have to come Amen. because you say my people are ready. Amen. Lord, that's what we want. Yes. I pray that as we, as John has given us this homework to contemplate this wonderful, great love, that we really latch upon it, Lord. That you make our hearts burn and long for you like you never had before. In Jesus' name we pray. Amen. 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 Amen.